Thank you for joining me today again as we take a look at another of life's big questions. The question following origins and beginnings is the question of why things are so so wrong or why have things gone so badly? Why is there so much suffering? Why is there so much pain in the world? Every person owes it to themselves to figure out this question. It's not an easy question to figure out. But if you're a Christian, there is a biblical explanation. And that explanation is written for us in Genesis 3. It's presented to us in the form of what might be called actual facts in a pictorial way. And and in a fashion that we can understand something of the dynamic of what is going on, what this was like in the reality of that moment, it's hard for us to grasp. And I dare say, like so many other things in Scripture and in history, if we were to be given other ways of seeing it that God knows, (laughs) we'd never understand it. And so he has presented us this fact in this way. So we read, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And we know that the name serpent is that which is is attributed to Satan. Revelation 12, 9, at the other end of God's re- revelation of Scripture says, The ancient serpent called the devil and the deceiver of the whole world. And 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen speaks about Satan as being um, the one who disguises himself as an angel of light. And so this account that we have here of the serpent engaging with the woman, Eve, and what happened then, how he misled her and distracted her and attacked her and stirred the desires of her heart. And this is what he says. Did God actually say to you, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. This is the account as we read it in Genesis 3, and I would recommend again that you go back and read over slowly, line by line, through Genesis 3 to get a deeper picture. Someone has called this the pivot of the Bible. It seems maybe an imbalance that you've only got two chapters of the Bible and then everything else kind of falls off this. Well, of course, it's pivotal. It's a very pivotal moment. It's a solid history in pictorial form that speaks of a number of very powerful realities and helps us get, as Christians, an understanding of why there's so much suffering and pain and evil in the world. It begins with temptation. As we say, Satan, we believe, is the source. Although he's pictured as a serpent here, the rest of Scripture tells us that that is another way of speaking of him. And sin comes from outside, as it were. It's not God's creation. God is not the author of this. The world that God has made was perfect and good, very good, 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 as it says. But it is from the outside that Satan brings in this temptation. As C.S. Lewis says, it's not the, it's the non-good. And there is a lesson here in the ways of evil. Notice how the engagement begins drawing attention to things, putting doubts in the mind of God's highest form of creation, the woman and the man. Doubts about his nature. Doubts about his word. Did God say? And what he really does is he draws her down the alley of unbelief. That's very, very important. Because unbelief is perhaps the greatest sin. And then he leads her to disobedience. Sin is always a challenge to God's goodness and character, and sin will set up alternative ways of saving ourselves from 
well, really, the consequences of sin, but it actually enslaves us even more. And where she goes wrong is that she listens to and she engages with Satan and she responds to his comments and his questions and accusations in an inaccurate way. She misquotes God. She overstates God's prohibitions. But she is fully compliant. She yielded, but if she had resisted, she would have conquered. But that was not to be. So you notice the story. She saw, she desired, she took, she ate, and then she gave some to her husband. And what we have is the, is the description of the fall of the human race. And in the very key core part of that is the human heart's desire for self-assertion, for self-will, for independence. And those are all the central factors that still take a very big part in the story of sin, suffering and evil today. We know the world is full of things that go wrong. Some are natural evils, as we call them, natural disasters. But then there are moral evils where we have an, a really serious part and we, we are engaged in it. Our desires, we follow the dictates of our fallen nature and we pursue after those things with a selfishness and a determination and it ends up in the consequences of suffering for ourselves and suffering for others. And what were the consequences for Eve and Adam? Well, instantly there was guilt. It talks about how they realized they were naked. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. There's this sense of guilt and shame, and then fear and loss of innocence. It's a world where you can never have peace. You're always looking over your shoulder. You're always on edge. You, you, you lose all sense of hope. God judges them, and there's a painful outcome for both of them. There's a number of consequences that happen for the woman and the man and Satan. Summed up in verses 17 to 19 of chapter 3. Because Adam, to Adam he says, Because you listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you, and in pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth, and you shall eat the plants of the field. And by the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Yes, sorrow, hardship, toil, and death. Why is life so hard? This is the biblical explanation. Then the, the, they are then pushed out of the paradise. They lose paradise. They lose that relationship they have with their creator. Sin creates a separation between them and God, the one who's made them the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who we can see already in the first chapter of Genesis, but we're past that. But you can go back and see God said, let us make man in our image. Sin is separating them, and then not just vertically, but sin will separate them horizontally from each other, human and human. And into that world will come pain and guilt and envy and accusation and counter-accusation and finally murder. And all of that because of this choice. Every other belief has to give an explanation for why things have gone wrong. Richard Dawkins at least had the honesty to say that we're just dancing to our DNA. In other words, we just act according to our biological, as we are designed, as it were. It's nothing to do with me. But of course, that's not so. Other people will talk about being karma, or you're punished in this life for the last life, something you didn't do or did do. There are all sorts of explanations that are given. It's a good place to begin a conversation with people. Why is everything so badly wrong? And going back to the Bible, and my, my encouragement is stay with the Bible. Don't try to oversimplify. Take it seriously and let the Bible speak for itself because it is so powerful and so clear. And this fits with your story and my story. We know our hearts 
We know the guilt, the shame, the fear, and the loss of innocence. We know the seeing, desiring, taking, and eating. This is our story of suffering and sin in the world too.